Hey songwriters, welcome to the studio. My name is Dean and this video is all about teaching you how to use GarageBand iOS for your iPad or iPhone. My goal for this tutorial is to show you some of the most useful and exciting instruments, tools, and features within GarageBand iOS and to make it as easy as possible for you brand new beginners to go out there and start making music. So with that in mind, let's dive in. All right, so before we get started, you might be asking the question, well, how do I simply download the app? It's really easy. All you have to do is go into the app store, hit search, type in GarageBand, and then you'll scroll down and you'll see it right here. And normally it would say get if you haven't downloaded this already, but mine says open because I've already downloaded it. And in that case, I can hit open and start making music. So if you haven't already, scroll over to GarageBand and open it. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna open the last project that you worked on. But I wanna take you back one step to the main menu. So you're gonna hit this triangle in the top left corner of the screen and it says my songs. So click on my songs and this takes you back to the GarageBand main menu. And if you'll look up in the top right of the screen, you'll see a little plus button and that's to create a brand new project. And I want you to start there. So let's click the plus button and now it gives you options. You can choose all kinds of different instruments, but I want you to go back to the very first one the keyboard. And if you'll look down at the bottom, you can see four different options that you have to choose from. So go ahead and click Smart Piano. What is the Smart Piano? Well, you can choose a bass note and some higher notes and start to create chords even if you don't play piano. Check this out. Pretty stinking cool, right? And if you look at this little button here, this is the autoplay feature. So let's click that and it opens up a new option for us. And that's this knob where we can select from four different rhythms that the piano will automatically play for us. So now let's click on number one and now I'll hit C on my keyboard and we'll see what it sounds like. Isn't that crazy cool? But now that we've looked at the autoplay feature here on the smart piano, I want to tell you that this autoplay feature is not just for the piano or for synthesizers. It's for every smart play instrument within GarageBand iOS. So if we switch instruments and go over to strings, click on smart strings, then hit the autoplay feature, you'll see again that now we have options for autoplay strings. So I'll click on number one and we'll test some out. So you get the idea. It's gonna give you different melodies, different rhythms that you can add into your song. It's super, super cool. So one last instrument that I wanna show you is the guitar. So let's switch over to guitar. But let's go ahead and choose autoplay. Let's go to number two because it has a picking option that I think you're gonna like. Isn't that cool? So we could keep going with different creative options on all of the different smart instruments, but I'm gonna leave that up to you. All right, so now that you have an idea of what the smart controls piano is, I wanna show you where the regular piano lives. And all you have to do is simply click this red button here. So if I wanna pick out individual notes or play chords like a normal pianist, I can do that here in this menu. And here's the thing, I don't want you to think of that keyboard as just for playing a piano sound. It is actually for playing a whole library's worth of synthesizers, pads, and all kinds of other really cool sounds. So right now we're still in the same smart keyboard. So how do we get to the Alchemy synth? By simply hitting this button right here, which allows us to change our instrument. And now look down at the bottom of the screen and you'll see Alchemy synth. And that's what we're going to select. Is that not so cool and so much fun to be able to play that right here on your phone? But again, here's the crazy part. It's not just this sound. There's a whole library's worth of synthesizers and pads and other different sounds. Now, the question is, how do we access those sounds? By simply hitting the triangle in the upper left region of the screen, 
it then shows you what sound you're using. And if you click on that sound, it shows you all the options that you have within this instrument. So we have different lead sounds, mallet sounds, pad sounds, rhythmic sounds, and so on. And with each one, you can scroll through and choose tons of different sounds, which is so awesome. So now let's get into the drum track. So what you're gonna do is simply click the add track button again, and then swipe over to drums. Now you'll see several different options for creating drum beats to go in your song. In this video, we're just gonna focus on the smart drums. Now, the smart drums allow you to simply drag and drop different elements of a drum kit into this box here, which you can choose between simple and complex, quiet and loud, and anywhere in between. Let me show you what I mean. Pretty cool, right? And if I wanna record this drum beat into my project, I simply hit the red record button. We're gonna talk about the basics of recording high quality vocals in GarageBand iOS. Now the first big thing that we need to note is that you always wear headphones when recording vocals. Because if you don't, the sound from all of your other tracks will bleed into your vocal recording and it'll just start to sound like a muddy mess. So before you get started, make sure you plug in some earbuds or a pair of headphones and you'll be ready to go. Now the first thing we need to do obviously is create a new track. And then we're simply going to swipe over until we reach the microphone symbol and click on voice. And now we have a menu with lots of really cool options. The first thing I wanna show you is the monitor button. When you turn on the monitor, it allows you to hear yourself as you record. So if I click on, da 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 da. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off just so I don't annoy you in this video. But when I'm recording, I definitely keep that on because I wanna hear my voice and I wanna hear some of the processing that's on my voice as I record. And now let's look at some of the controls and this is where it starts to get really fun. The first one I wanna show you is actually the vocal hall. And this is just another way to say reverb. Now if I turn that vocal hall up and turn my monitor on, you'll hear its effect. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. If I turn it back down. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. So that is definitely a really fun and a really important knob for you to learn. Then we will go to the ever exciting pitch control knob. And if I turn that on, it actually starts to rein in the pitch of my vocal. Da da da, da 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 da. Pretty stinking cool, right? So I'm gonna adjust these to taste and do a take. Can you believe it? Got my feet on the ground. I don't believe it. I got my feet on the ground. So not bad, right? Using my iPhone, sitting in a bedroom, making just a few adjustments, I have quite a clean vocal, one that I'm really pleased with. So we know the goal is making awesome music, but to do that, you do need to learn some of the technical points of the program. Namely, you need to learn your way around the GarageBand iOS interface. So let's go ahead and jump in. So we're back inside of the project, looking at the touch keyboard. The first big question is, well, how do I record and capture these sounds that I want in my song? And you've probably already guessed it, but in the top middle of your screen, you're simply going to hit the red record button. Then of course, hit the stop button. Then I think the next most important button to learn is the undo button, which is located right here. So if you recorded something and you totally jacked it up, then go ahead and hit that undo button and try again. Now, when I was recording, did you hear that clicking sound? Well, that's called the metronome and you can turn the metronome on or off using this button right here. Now I would recommend recording with the metronome on because it's gonna keep you tastefully on time, but what if the metronome isn't the right pace for your song? 
Well, all you have to do is hit this wrench icon and it brings up this menu. We'll slide down to where it says tempo and click on that. Here you can change the tempo or the pace of your song by either clicking up and down or even by using the tap tempo feature, which is where you can simply tap in the pace of your song and it'll tell you what speed it should be at. Then when I'm done, I simply hit the wrench icon again and now your metronome is going to click at the pace which you chose. All right, so now that we have a part recorded, I wanna show you one of the most important buttons when it comes to navigating GarageBand iOS. And that is this button here that looks kind of like a block. If you click that button, it's gonna switch back and forth from what's called the project window or project view or a single instrument within the project that you want to play and record parts for. So for now, let's go back to project view. This is where you'll see all of your different instrument parts and vocal parts all in one window. Next is the add tracks button. And this is another really important button. So pay attention. Right here in the bottom left corner, you'll see a plus sign. If you click that plus sign, it opens up a new track where you can put any kind of instrument you like into your project. Now, there are more features in this project window, but there's two main ones that I wanna show you in this video. Number one is how to slide out your track header, which you simply do by putting your finger here on this mark and then sliding it out. Then a few more features appear. And the main one I wanna show you is that you can adjust the volume of each track. So if one instrument is too loud or too quiet, you can turn it up or down right here and then slide it back over and get back to work. So that's it for our navigation lesson in this video. Are there more buttons? Yes, but I wanted to start with the main buttons, the main features in Windows that you're gonna use practically any time that you make music here in GarageBand iOS. So when you're all done with your song and you're ready to export it, you're simply gonna go back to the main menu by clicking My Songs, and then you're gonna hit the Select button in the top right of the screen, and then simply select the song that you wanna export. Now you have a few options, and now I wanna show you the main way to export your song, and that's by using this icon here. And now you can choose whether you want to export it as a song, an audio file for listening, or as a ringtone, or even if you wanna share your entire project file with all the tracks to another person or another device. So we're talking about exporting our song, so we're gonna simply hit song, and now you get to choose the audio quality. And really, I'm gonna recommend two options. If you're just wanting to export it to get a general listen to it, or to share the quick idea with a friend, then I would go with the high quality MP3 option. But if you feel like this song is all done, I would go down and choose the uncompressed WAV file. It's definitely a larger file, but it's gonna be uncompressed and clean. So for now, I'm gonna go back to our high quality setting and scroll down, and you can see that you can actually change the name, you can change the composer, the album name, and you can even choose custom cover art. So if I hit choose photo, then I can go into all my photos and pick something. This is random photos my son took, and this is his song, so let me choose that one. And now when I export the song, it's gonna have that as the cover photo. Then I'll hit share, and now you can see I can airdrop it to a nearby computer or laptop. I can send it via text to a friend. I can email it to myself. I can send it to SoundCloud, to voice memos, to really wherever I want to send it. So simply choose your desired location and it will send an exported file to that location. It's that simple and you're done. So that's all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to comment below what was the most helpful or exciting part to you. And if you wanna learn more about GarageBand iOS from me, then I am really excited to announce that I just published my brand new course called GarageBand iOS Masterclass for Beginners. This course has more than 25 videos where we show you step-by-step -step how to use GarageBand iOS and the best part is every lesson is five minutes or less. So you can take it piece by piece and not get overwhelmed. If you're interested in the course, then check out the link in the description and I will catch you in another video.